perché aveva questo gusto. Era artista, artista fino a pittrice, pittore, fino a... Nel, nel più profondo del suo essere, io dico sempre dalla punta dei capelli fino alla punta delle dita dei piedi, Ida era assolutamente arte, arte, arte. This is Ida Barbarigo, a life in portraits. Curious, creative and captivating Venice, the romantic Italian city that's captured the world's heart for centuries. Ida Barbarigo was born there in 1920, and it feels like destiny. She was born a Caderin, a flourishing family of scholars, architects, sculptors and furniture makers. With an artistic lineage in Venice for more than three centuries. Ida's father Guido was a distinguished painter. Her elegant mother Livia was a poet and a painter herself was his muse. Here the father paints the mother, their shared beauty in the painting The Idol, a work from 1911. It was fate, of course, that Ida was born into a family of artists and would become one too, though not at first. She was discouraged from becoming an artist, and she resisted, but then the urge for art was impossible to overcome. As a child she was observant, independent, imaginative, and solitary, an expert in every game that required skill. With a family like hers, almost by osmosis, she knew how to paint. First, she assisted her father when he prepared his colors, immediately skilled in drawing, tone and shade. Later, she became his student at the Fine Arts Academy. She challenged him and developed her language in the process. She understood what it took. About the academy, she said, Someone who knows how to draw does not need to learn, and if someone goes there to learn it, means he was not born an artist. She didn't look to other students, but to the masters. Her work was influenced by Giotto and many Renaissance painters, the art of early civilizations and modern painters such as Piet Mondrian. In 1942, Ida's work was selected in a young artist's competition at the Venice Biennale. It was the first of what became three participations in this prestigious exhibition. 1972 followed and again in 1995 when she was selected by Jean Clair for the main pavilion. Ida was on her way but the way would always be hers to define. She was a restless soul with an impeccable eye. What caught her eye? Signs, symbols, language. She was an artist who worked in series. Examining her oeuvre, each series she worked on is like tracing an obsessive intellectual mind. She grasped an idea and pursued every ounce of it. Her series took many forms, portraits, self-portraits, judges, sphinxes, which may have even been yet another reflection of herself, Ida always keeps us guessing. Her career is full of patient iconographic research. In every series, the content of the canvas included many things, flowers, leaves, demons, beaches, city views, and then the ungraspable elements like light, air and water. Above all else, one specific theme is dominant and recurring, the movable, sculptural, simple chair. A humble object she returned to repeatedly and constantly made it new. Ida chose chairs as contemporary emblems, artifacts of Venice capable of reinvention. Something that you're used to seeing every day and that suddenly appears to you eternal, beyond expression. Chairs bring to life the postures of the living. Like every genius, she pursued her ideas obsessively, in deep silence, for months and years on end. The true monuments of our time are chairs. They are an agile and ambiguous group who live elsewhere 
and in another time. I haven't understood if they're calling me or waiting for me. The solitary chair, stacked, stiff, in groups, like a nest or an army, an essence of a changing city. In the words of a close friend and curator, Daniela Ferretti, Barbarigo was a profound artist with rare expressive power and a soul of exceptional depth. A special artist because she has no comparison. She didn't follow any movements. She was always consistent with her peculiar way to feel paint. For Ida, painting was a necessity of life. She could paint the energy of the unseen. Her achievements made possible only because of acute observation. When I think of Ida, most of the time I imagine her sitting at one of the cafes on the Zattere or Piazza San Marco or along the Parisian boulevards, contemplating the chairs and above all, observing. Observing the mysterious, enigmatic voids and the interstitials of simple chairs stacked in piles or abandoned in random geometric lines. She waited for a new vision to come to replace the usual image of these daily objects, designing them to reveal their essence. Nothing comes from anything. Everything takes place in a suspended, motionless time and suddenly in a new space appears the other image. The one that emerges from the deepest part of the soul. L'unità del profondo. Ida found her soulmate, painter Zoran Mozic, and they married in September 1949 in a simple ceremony in Venice. These two artists found each other, shared a passion and pursued their bond until the end of their lives. Zoran passed away in 2005 and Ida in 2018. Zoran painted countless portraits of his wife, such as this one, even in its unfinished details the spirit of both artists shines through. Or in this portrait of Zoran, painted by Ida in 1946. Always a woman to define things on her terms, Ida spoke of their union in a straightforward way that lacks sentimentality, but affirms a notion of equality. Personally, I didn't believe in marriage. I did not in the least want to found a family, I merely wanted to confirm a true and noble bond with a person I truly respected. They lived in separate apartments, separate studios, but had an inseparable bond. In 1952, a new city enters Ida's life, Paris. Together with Zoran, she moved to the dreamy city of light. She arrived with the intention to unlearn painting, to start again, a fresh canvas for new beginnings. The 1950s and 60s were an exciting time, culturally and creatively, to be in Paris. She encountered prominent French artists, critics and art historians. Important encounters with Lucio Contana, Germaine Richier and Giacometti made deep and lasting impressions on her. Above all, the city was her muse. Her attitude there was perpetual exploration, to see the city by walking. A proactive approach initiated by new series, Promenade, Passeggiate. The titles of these works tell the bigger story. Wager walk, windblown walk, immobile walk, risky walk, improfitable walk viewing Paris as only an outsider can. I watched this way of being, a nonchalance in people, a tone that resounded differently, almost indescribable, that I only found in certain places in the city. Observing, the best way of gaining knowledge and inspiration. She drew everything she saw, heard and felt. Later, she made a catalogue of her own work in her beautiful libretti or notebooks. Like a shepherd watching their flock, the city was always within Ida's gaze. Ida's painting is defined by a passion for lines that suggest, rather than enclose. 
their interactions between solid and void, between what is there and not there. The ever-elusive, ungraspable thing, the ephemeral energy of beings and objects and materials. The vitality of a city sensed by an artist and returned on the canvas through shape, color and form. Her works elude, allude, without making anything explicit. She moved to the frequency of the city and painted to the frequency of her heart, emotion into expression. From 1959 onwards, she lived between Venice and Paris. In 1978, she moved to Venice's Palazzo K. Balbivaliere and remained there for the last decades of her life. Perhaps there is where her spirit and artistry really shines through. The home and studio where her easels, brushes, paint, paintings and those of her illustrious family resided under one roof with the Grand Canal just outside. Within the Palazzo's walls, viewers can see the true atmosphere of an artist. I can't resist brushes. It's my form of voluptuousness. I need them more than my clothes. I try to never throw them out. Throughout the 80s and 90s, she painted a series of self-portraits, an enigmatic series that exposed layers of her personality mixed with melancholy and a mysterious dark side. An introspective figuration that dripped with emotion toward abstraction. The viewer is forced to pay attention to what the artist hides and what she reveals. Interiority and exteriority, charm and vanity, beauty in the eye of the beholder. Ida was a truly unique character who belonged to a family of artists, the intellectual fabric, part of the richest history of Venice. Ida Barbarigo passed away at the age of 97, but she continued painting almost all of her life with a vitality, wisdom and diligence that defied her age. She titled the late series of works L'Unità del Profondo as an expression of her deepest soul, what is difficult to explain or express, the space between the real and the surreal. Ho avuto una comunicazione diretta con l'eternità. Her work has been shown in worldwide exhibitions, including major shows in London, Paris and New York, and of course in her native Italy. Many private and public collections house her work, and there is still a sense that there is more potential for her fascinating story. An artist deserving of a place of worldwide recognition. She was a unique artist that left us with a profound legacy and a singular artistic language. A long life faded to art, devoted to art, destined to art.